Good afternoon, President DeJoya, Dr. Healton, Dr. Malone, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, members of our extraordinary graduating class, family and friends. As Dean of the School of Nursing and Health Studies, I welcome you to the commencement exercises of Georgetown University. Please remain. <laughs> Please remain standing for the National Anthem and the Invocation. The National Anthem will be led by members of Georgetown University Concert Choir and Chamber Singers under the direction of, Frederick, uh, of Professor Frederick Binkholder.
Thank you. The invocation will be offered by Reverend Kevin O'Brien of the Society of Jesus and Georgetown's Vice President for Mission and Ministry. Let us pray. Our loving creator, we gather on this hilltop one last time, aware that above all, it is you who gathered us here some years ago, and you who today unite us amid all of our blessed diversity, and you who send us forth with a holy summons. We give you thanks for our celebration today, for our family and friends who made this day possible, and for all on our hilltop who cared for our students along the way. This has been a place where we have let the world in, from Baltimore and Syria, Iraq, Paris, San Bernardino, Ferguson and Flint, and so many other places that have marked our time here. In this world, which is so beautiful but broken, give your sons and daughters of Georgetown the courage to be prophets who will boldly and eloquently speak the truth in our age. Give them the passion to be relentless advocates for peace and understanding in our world and vigorous defenders of the dignity of every human being. Give them hope to be dreamers and visionaries who can look beyond what is given and expected to imagine possibilities yet unseen. Lure them, dear Lord, beyond the gates, beyond the narrow bounds of self-interest, and empower them to create works of beauty in a sometimes harsh world, to labor for justice in places that are indifferent to human need, to care for people with compassion, particularly those most forgotten and vulnerable. In the spirit of the Ad Maiorum Dei Glorium, we pray with St. Ignatius of Loyola today. May all of their talents, May all of their awesome gifts of mind, heart, and body, may their boundless energy and imagination be offered back to you, dear Lord, and our world, for your greater glory and the good of others. Amen. Thank you, Father O'Brien. Please be seated. Our founder, the Most Reverend John Carroll, first Archbishop of Baltimore and first Catholic Bishop in the United States, took legal possession of land on our hilltop in 1789, and we mark that as our founding date. Our first student, the future North Carolina Congressman William Gaston, arrived in 1791, and our first bachelor's degree were awarded in 1817. It was in 1815 that with enrollments passing the 100 mark, the college's president, Father John Grassi of the Society of Jesus, asked then Congressman Gaston to present a petition for a federal charter, a document that still today sanctions the academic business we do here. It is our custom to initiate academic ceremonies with a reading of that charter. To discharge that office, I'm very pleased to introduce Mr. Ed Edward M. Quinn, Secretary of the University. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as now are or from time to time may be, the president and directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia, to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other persons meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted in other colleges and universities of the United States and to issue in an appropriate form the diplomas or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission of such degree. Signed, Langdon Chivas, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Guyard, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, approved March 1st, 1815, James Madison. Thank you, Ed. 
Again, greetings on behalf of Georgetown University School of Nursing and Health Studies. Today is really an extraordinarily exciting day for us. We have been anticipating it for four years, as you probably have as well, to celebrate the extraordinary academic achievements of our student body. When our school was founded in 1903, a primary goal was educating a nursing workforce for the then relatively new Georgetown University Hospital. Our first graduates, all eight of them, received their diplomas at a ceremony in Gaston Hall in June 1906. So when I think about the 110 years that stands between us today and our first graduating class, I'm struck by two major ideas, extraordinary transformation and enduring values. Regarding the first, it comes as no surprise to any of you who have been engaged in the study of healthcare that our environment of healthcare is dynamic and extraordinarily fluid. It requires that we remain creative, innovative, nimble, responsive, and reflective. Many, many, many of the roles for which you're preparing yourselves have evolved in extraordinary ways. The roles of nurses, for example, have changed dramatically over the 110 years, frankly, over the 10 years um, that we can think about it. The profession is looked to as a key player, really ensuring and informing the quality and safety of care that we give it to our patients, their families, and their communities, engaged in promoting health, preventing disease, and transforming health systems. Our scientific discovery, which many of you have been deeply embedded in, has fundamentally changed the way in which we think about treatment, the way in which we move our new ideas from the laboratories into our communities. Our health policy, health regulatory, and health finance environments demands that we have very talented health administrators, health policy analysts, who are deeply in touch with the care delivery and the care um, the legislative process related to healthcare delivery. And finally, our incredibly interconnected world means that the health and well-being of our global community matters to all of us, regardless of where we sit. Our school's identity, especially since the early 20th century, has really e evolved in quite extraordinary ways in which we think about our role as preparing students to excel and contribute to the various domains that make up this extraordinary landscape of healthcare delivery. But amid all of these changes, it's really important for us to remember what endures. At Georgetown, we are immensely privileged to have a values-based framework that draws inspiration from this university's Catholic and Jesuit traditions and identity. So while healthcare continues to evolve and change, and will continue to do so, our approach has been focusing on care of the whole person, celebrating the community in diversity, serving the common good with particular attention to the underserved and marginalized, and finally, forming men and women to live generously in service with, for others. This undergirds who we are as a school and the ways in which we approach the formation of you, our extraordinary graduates. We call upon each of you, each of our graduates, to employ the knowledge and skills that you've gained in Georgetown as you go into the world, always remembering to reflect the deep tradition of values that are informed by our extraordinary universities. I want to congratulate each and every one of you and your wonderful family and friends to whom we really have great appreciation for the ways in which you've assisted in the formation of these extraordinary young people. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Beverly Malone to come forward to receive the honorary degree. Professor Joan Burgraff Riley, who Department of Human Science and Department of Professional Nursing Practice, also Assistant Dean for Educational and Educational Innovation, will read the honorary degree citation and President DeJoya and I will present the hood and diploma to Dr. Malone. Florence Nightingale, the legendary pioneer of modern nursing once expressed, 
Were there none who were discontented with what they have, the world would never reach anything better. The sentiment captured in Nightingale's quotation, one of tireless commitment to improvement driven by dissatisfaction with the status quo, could describe the career of the preeminent healthcare leader we honor here today at commencement. Dr. Beverly Malone is the Chief Executive Officer of the National League for Nursing in the United States. Prior to assuming this position in February 2007, she served for six years as General Secretary of the Royal College of Nursing in the United Kingdom, the largest union of nurses in the world. It was a long journey. The eldest of seven siblings, she was raised in Elizabethtown in rural Kentucky in the still segregated south of the United States. She earned her bachelor's degree in nursing from the University of Cincinnati and then worked as a nurse in New Jersey, obtaining a master's degree in adult psychiatric nursing from Rutgers. In 1972, she was appointed instructor of psychiatric nursing at Wayne State University. She was awarded a PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Cincinnati in 1981 and then became assistant administrator of the medical center there. In 1986, Dr. Malone was appointed dean of the School of Nursing at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, a historically black university, and was named interim vice chancellor of the university in 1994. In 1996, Dr. Malone was elected president of the American Nurses Association, an organization representing 180,000 registered nurses throughout the United States, becoming the second African American to hold this position. President Bill Clinton named her Deputy Assistant Secretary for Health in the Department of Health and Human Services, at the time the highest position a nurse has held in the US government. In 2001, she became the General Secretary of the Royal College of Nursing with 400,000 nurses, the largest professional union of nursing staff in the world, a position she held until January 2007. How could this American, she and others asked, run the most prestigious professional nursing trade union in the world? Dr. Malone's spectacular career makes the answer very clear. She was simply the most qualified person in the entire nursing world. And in that role, she became an effective member of and often spokesperson for the Higher Education Funding Council for England, the European Federation of Nurses Associations, the Commonwealth Nurses Federation, and the International Council of Nurses. In 2006, she was appointed a member of the UK delegation to the World Health Assembly. She had previously represented the United States in a similar role. And from February 2007 to the present, she has served as CEO of the National League for Nursing, which has a membership of 40,000 nurse faculty and 1,200 institutions. Dr. Malone is a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing and an elected member of the National Academy of Medicine. Insisting that healthcare is a right rather than a privilege, Dr. Malone has urged greater visibility of the nursing profession. She is committed to helping produce a diverse nursing workforce and provide care for patients in ways that address the changing dynamics of today's technology-rich healthcare environment. Dr. Malone is particularly concerned with fostering connections between the nursing profession in corporations, associations, and foundations. NLN partnerships and collaborations range from Johnson & Johnson, Laird Medical Corporation, to AARP and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, all sharing the goal of advancing the science of nursing education. In 2009, she was remarkably persistent in testimony before Congress addressing the persistent short of nurses that threatens healthcare delivery in America today. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of Jesuits and therefore the first founder of this Jesuit university insisted, love is shown more in deeds than in words. Could there be a better definition of the selfless care at the core of the healthcare professions? And so it is entirely fitting as we send off our new graduates into the challenging and rewarding health fields that we set before them this figure who embodies a striking combination of cutting edge practice steadfast compassion that defines her calling. Thus, with heartfelt admiration and eager praise, Georgetown University today confers upon Beverly Malone the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa.
By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon Dr. Beverly Malone the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. And it's now my pleasure to present Dr. Beverly, Beverly Malone, who will deliver the commencement address. My goodness, uh, my mother should have been here for that one. <laughs> I am truly honored to be here with you, to the president, his senior team, faculty, alumni, and the students, most importantly, those to whom this day belongs. Close your eyes and take a deep breath of your accomplishment the resilience that has carried you through challenges over mountains of difficulty and reframed the idea of courage to one who makes it successfully through that course. If one chooses to think about their education like a journey, then today is the stop along the way to celebrate. Or maybe it was last night, but we'll talk about today. On any journey for a lifelong partner, you will need a suitcase. Oh, lifelong learner, sorry, partner. I must be thinking of mine. <laughs> Luggage that can even end up being useless baggage. There is always the question of what do you take with you for the next part of the trip and what to leave behind. As an expert packer, due to my extensive travels, I have some recommendations that may be useful, or not, <laughs> as you place your foot on the road to the rest of this journey. First of all, know where your North Star is. Keep it in view. I'm speaking of the North Star of your energy, your passion, or simply your way forward. So I would suggest that you pack your core values. Regardless of the next step you need to take, you will need those core values to keep you oriented and following your own yellow brick road. Let me share some of mine. Caring, integrity, diversity, which is really inclusion, meaningful inclusion, and excellence. Caring is promoting health, healing and hope in response to the human condition. You know I'm a nurse, so that's, that's what it's about. It's about caring. I'm a nurse, a psychiatric mental health nurse, so this is my bedrock. When I lose my caring, I'm losing a major part of who I am and have been for some time. Promoting health is pretty easy. The world is sort of coming up with the idea that we need a health nation, not an illness nation. Healing, I've been a healer for a very long time. I think that when my foreparents came over on a conveyance, if they had not come over, I would be in somebody's village saying, I'm your village healer. I am your village healer. And then hope. Every nurse, every healthcare provider needs to carry hope with them. They shouldn't arrive at an encounter with patients and say, or people and say, does anybody have any hope with them? It should be there already. And then integrity, respecting the dignity and moral wholeness of every person without conditions or limitations. There was a psychologist named Carl Rogers who talked about unconditional regard. That's what this is. This is just being human and respectfully sharing the planet with others. Then diversity, the meaningful inclusion, affirming the uniqueness of and differences among persons, ideas, values, and ethnicities. It's bigger than color. This is truly required for your global citizenship. It is coming to your own backyard and necessary 
to effectively live in this world where countries merge, bump into one another. You see, they were probably protected by these invisible imagined boundaries, and suddenly we realized they really weren't there. Make sure you pack the last one, excellence. Co-creating and implementing transformative strategies with daring ingenuity. Let me say that again because I know you're going to take that one with you. Co-creating and implementing transformative strategies with daring ingenuity. The truth is, colleagues, that none of us do anything by ourselves. Now, this is a secret that most leaders won't talk much about. But we co-create. Unless you're writing something to get into a, a, a national organization, I do understand you do everything by yourself. But otherwise, it's co-creating. And it's not enough to co-create. You have to implement it. And they have to be transformative strategies. Now, let me give you the definition of transformation. If I give you a dollar and you give me back four quarters, you have given me change. Thank you very much. <laughs> if I give you a dollar and you give me back five dollars, we have transformed the situation. And that's what we're looking for with your graduation, with your move into the system, the new system. We're looking for transformative strategies. And then with daring ingenuity means that if you're a leader, and I assume that most of you are, that you will find a cliff every now and then that you may just fall over into. And if you haven't found it yet, keep walking as a leader and you will find it. And if you have a chance, get to the bottom of the cliff and put in a safety net. So when you fall, you fall with grace. And people say, did you see how Beverly Malone fell? Wasn't that just absolutely lovely? <laughs> but every now and then, you won't know that the cliff is there, and you'll just fall ugly. But it has never been about the fall. It has always been about the getting up. And that's where your co-collaborators come in, huh? And they help you to rise. So those core values, I would suggest that you make sure that you take with you. The smartest guys in the room, and I heard I, someone mention it last night, I think it was, that the smartest guys in the room had these same core values. But the fact is, that they didn't have caring, and so they were not quite the smartest guys in the room. So pack those core values. They may not be exactly the ones that I've shared with you, but pack you some core values so you know when you're on your core values, you know when you're off your core values. And then you need to pack an understanding of how precious time is. Pack an appreciation for years and days and hours and minutes. I always pack this poem to carry with me. God's minute. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, but it's up to me to use it. Give a count if I abuse it. It's only just a minute, but all eternity is in it. So pack your time. Your suitcase must be bulging by now, but related to excellence, pack your world of possibilities. Mine goes like this. I never thought I could be dean of nursing at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, but I never thought I couldn't. I never thought I could be president of the American Nurses Association, but I never thought I couldn't. I never thought that I could be General Secretary of the Royal College of Nursing in the United Kingdom. But I never thought I couldn't. I never thought I could be the Chief Executive Officer for our nation's oldest and most treasured nursing organization. But I never thought I couldn't. Pack the possibilities. Leave the could nots right here. In this room, let somebody sweep them up. Let me add three more things to leave behind. 
Leave your admiration and gratitude for your faculty and mentors to inspire them as they continue to teach others. Let the world know you stand on the shoulder of giants. It's a cinch, oh, I've got some things my great grandmother taught me. It's a cinch by the inch. It's hard by the yard. Leave that yard mentality as you keep steadily inching along toward your goal, stopping to breathe deeply and celebrate along the way. Leave your concept of defeat, knowing that I can be delayed, but not defeated. The accomplishment of this degree resounds within your very core, announcing there may be delays, but no defeat anywhere to be found. As long as I have breath, that one minute, I have opportunities, possibilities that I have not yet explored. I'm wondering if there's anything else you should pack or leave behind. Well, let's try leaving your stress. But it may find out where you have gone and follow you to that location. So let me give you a brief strategic view of stress. There are three types of stressors. Inevitable, imposed, and chosen. Inevitable stress can be summed up as an illness, aging, death. If you were never sick a day in your life, you died first. That was your major accomplishment. <laughs> then there's imposed stress, and it simply means that someone had the audacity to give it to you, and you had the audacity to accept it. Usually, family and friends are quite adept at this one. <laughs> I have a toolkit for managing imposed stress. I look at it. Doesn't look like Bev Malone's stress. I taste it. Mmm, doesn't taste like my stress. I smell it. Doesn't smell like my stress. I put it back in the box, wrap it back up, send it back, Wrong address. <laughs> you have the authority to make other choices when you understand your stress. But I said there were three. And the last one is finally chosen stress. It's not enough that you have inevitable stress, stress that you impose stress. No, you go out and you choose your stress. We have that freedom to choose our stress. We usually forget that we have chosen that particular stressor later in life, whether it's a job, a friend, or even a life partner. But many of our stressors are chosen, and once we can label the stressor, we have the authority and ability to make other choices. Colleagues, and I do consider you colleagues, you don't have to take an exam, you don't have to sign up for anything, you are my colleagues. My colleagues, my dear colleagues, I wish you success on this journey. I hope your suitcase is halfway packed and something that I've said will even help it be packed more. And I wish you nothing but good things. All the best. Thank you so much, Beverly. We will now have the presentation of candidates completing the Bachelor of Science degree. Dr. Jan LaRock, Assistant Professor of Human Science, will read the names of the candidates. Dr. Amanda Little, past chair of the executive faculty, will assist with the presentation of the diploma scrolls. Students will receive the baccalaureate hoods from our four department chairs. Dr. Ryung Sa, Department of Health Systems Administration, Dr. Rosemary Sokis, Department of Human Science, Dr. Bernard Liza, Department of International Health, and Dr. Adilma Yearwood, Department of Professional Nursing Practice.
Jefferson Hakey, summa cum laude. Margo Keel, magna cum laude. Sonia Nassim, cum laude. Diana Abreu, cum laude. Rachel Acri, cum laude. Lindsay Agresti, cum laude. Mina Akbar, cum laude. Isabel Andrews. Edward Bay. Macarena Basanez. Camila Beck. Manavi Bhagwat. Allison Bittner, magna cum laude. Emma Boone, summa cum laude. Emily Bauer, cum laude. Emily Mangiorno, magna cum laude. Rosemary Caffon. Emily Carbone. Michael Chapelier, magna cum laude. Se Chung Chen, cum laude. Shradra Sonia Cabria, cum laude. Andrea Marie Krista, magna cum laude. Lauren Chung. Carly Cianci, magna cum laude. Kathleen Connors. <laughs> Katrina Coogan, magna cum laude. <laughs> Caroline Cosgrove. <laughs> Mary Jean Coyle, cum laude. Madeline Dayhood. <laughs> Nicholas De La Santa, cum laude. <laughs> Camille Durago, cum laude. <laughs> Bailey Ditch, magna cum laude. Hanya L. Banhewi, summa cum laude. <laughs> Tariq Indele. <laughs> Nina Ng, magna cum laude. <laughs> Sarah Ng, cum laude. Erica Esposito, cum laude. Corinne Etchison. Erica Fabri. Oops. 
Alessandra Fodero. Madeline Gallo. Alyssa Girardi, magna cum laude. Monica Gibbons. Margaret Gillis. Harrison Glor. Shannon Glenn, magna cum laude. Kaylin Grant. <laughs> Ava Green. <laughs> Justin Gregg, summa cum laude. <laughs> Megan Guan, cum laude. <laughs> Lydia Haile, cum laude. Mika Harris. <laughs> Lindsay Horikoshi, magna cum laude. James Huber. Victoria Hudson. Sabiha Rabia Hussein, magna cum laude. Robert Severio Ayanacon, cum laude. Jin Jung, magna cum laude. Christina Caldi, magna cum laude. <laughs> Yuzna Kain Zhao, cum laude. <laughs> Yujin Kim, cum laude. <laughs> Kelly Ann Kimball, summa cum laude. Caitlin Kinkoff, cum laude. Lisa Lott Kanan, cum laude. Margaret Crackler, cum laude. Sophia Ladner. Rahul Lockenball. Jennifer Lapierre, magna cum laude. Michelle Larson, cum laude. Eileen Lee, cum laude. He Yang Gi Grace Lee. Myung Cum laude. Jacob Lewis, cum laude. Karen Lum, magna cum laude. Margaret Lutheringer, cum laude. Haley Nicole Maness, cum laude. <laughs> Heather Martin. <laughs> Mar
Molly Massarelli. Victoria Mong, cum laude. Joseph McDonald. Emily Min, magna cum laude. Haley Mitchell, cum laude. Grace Montgomery, cum laude. Brenda Muha. Herminio Navia III, summa cum laude. Bemnet Nawai. Kathleen Osea, cum laude. <laughs> Thomas Pachico, magna cum laude. Gabriela Padilla. Madhav J. Paul, cum laude. Jacqueline Morgan Payne, magna cum laude. Taylor Polk, cum laude. Alexander Porte. Laura Ellen Perunti. Yeah, Laura. Go, Laura. Gregory James Chapelsky, summa cum laude. <laughs> Olivia Puccio, magna cum laude. Sami Raman. Shamik Raman, magna cum laude. Neha Rajpal, magna cum laude. Hannah Samley, magna cum laude. Nicholas Joseph Santinillo, magna cum laude. <laughs> Azirs Sakar, cum laude. <laughs> Luisa Shefflin. <laughs> Renee Sharkey, magna cum laude. <laughs> Janae Cedar, magna cum laude. Ariana Simone, cum laude. Christian Smith, cum laude. Kelsey Smith, cum laude. Sarah Lorraine Solberg, cum laude. Kunam Suyun Baeva. Polavi Tatapudi, magna cum laude. Samuel Taylor D'Ambrosio, cum laude. Joanna Tennant, cum laude. Amy Tennant, cum laude. Kyle Thompson, cum laude. Christine Trin, magna cum laude. Madeline Marie Elk, summa cum laude. Caroline Von Horn, magna cum laude. 
Sarah Wadhams, magna cum laude. Marianne Wallach. Emmanuel Walton II. Marcus Wells, magna cum laude. Laura Whitehall. John Francis Whitmore. <laughs> Kathleen Williamson, magna cum laude. Aaron Wolf. Morgan Wright, cum laude. Michelle Shu. Magna cum laude. <laughs> Paige Yang. <laughs> Nicole Virginia Zeller. Will the members of the class of 2016 please stand? President DeJoya, I have the extraordinary honor to present to you the aforementioned candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. These students have been duly examined and recommended by the faculty and approved by the Board of Directors. I therefore ask that you bestow on them the degrees in course. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon these candidates the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. Thank you, quite the splendid group, I would say. And at this point, I would like to invite all of our graduates to turn around, face their families and friends, and thank them for the love and support that have made this day possible. Thank you so much a regular love fest. <laughs> it's now my great privilege to present President DeJoya. Well, thank you very much, Dean Cloonan, for your exceptional leadership of Georgetown's School of Nursing and Health Studies. To our commencement speaker, this afternoon, Dr. Beverly Malone, and we want to thank you for making this very special day that much more special by sharing your insights and your perspectives. It was an honor for us to have you with us today. Thank you very much. <clears throat> to our graduates and our families, 
to each member of our community present this afternoon. Thank you all for being here on this very special day for the members of the School of Nursing and Health Studies, class of 2016. First, a word of gratitude to your families for the trust they placed in us, for your education and for your formation as young women and men ready for the responsibilities of citizenship, of your chosen profession, of your future academic endeavors. Thank you to the extraordinary faculty that's here today for their deep care and commitment to teaching and mentorship, to scholarship, to the vibrancy of our university community. To our staff, thank you for your many contributions every day that have made this day possible. And finally, to our graduates, to the women and men before me, congratulations. All of your hard work, the challenges you've encountered, your triumphs, your service, your achievements, everything that you have done at Georgetown has brought you to this moment on this day. It was not all that long ago, not far from where we're seated right now, you joined our community. You came to us from around our world. You came to us with singular talents, individual perspectives, unique backgrounds. You came to us seeking to learn and to expand your horizons. And you came here to Georgetown a place where people, ideas, and values converge. And today we mark the journey, the experiences you have shared, the knowledge you have gained, which you have brought to this moment. In your time as students, we have sought to provide you a context for your formation. By formation, we mean the work of supporting each of you as you seek to become your most authentic self providing you with the conditions that will enable you to flourish, to realize your full promise. It is our hope that during your time here, as you've engaged in the work of formation, you've come to know better yourself, what matters most to you, how best to connect to others and to our world, how, how to be your most authentic, your deepest, your truest self, the person that you are the person that you are meant to be. Formation, formation is a journey of discovery, a journey of understanding, a journey of seeking out that which each of us can uniquely contribute to our world, a journey of deepening our faith, of understanding the commitments that we have to one another. This idea of journey, of pilgrimage, has a deep resonance with our tradition. St. Ignatius described himself as a pilgrim. Pope Francis, in announcing what he has called the extraordinary Jubilee Year of Mercy, taking place this year, a year in which he asks each of us and all of us to identify works of mercy that can animate our lives. He reminds us that pilgrimage is a way of life. It's a way of being. He writes, the practice of pilgrimage has a special place in this holy year because it represents the journey each of us makes in this life. Life itself is a pilgrimage, and the human being is a pilgrim traveling along the road making her or his way to the desired destination. Well, during your time on campus, you've come to know to use Pope Francis's word, this practice of pilgrimage, the conscious and purposeful commitment to a journey. And we celebrate today a significant moment in your lives, a destination you have been working towards, and now the beginnings of many wonderful things to come. You joined our community with an eagerness to engage ideas and to cultivate your intellect to forge your conscience and to deepen your character. And now with this, with commencement, you embark on another very special time in your lives. This is your time, and we are honored to share this moment with you. Congratulations on this very special day.
Thank you, President DeJoya. Please stand now for the singing of our alma mater, which will be led by members of the Georgetown University Concert Choir and Chamber Singers. The alma mater is located on the back of the commencement program book. Remain standing after that, if you would, for the benediction, which will be offered by Sister Helen Scarry, our Roman Catholic chaplain at Georgetown University. <laughs> A benediction for our graduates and all present. Go forth and become your own special word. Listen deeply and intently as God speaks. Be still and know that I am God. Go forth in trust. Blessed are they who believe that there will be a fulfillment of what was spoken to them by God. Go forth in peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, God's peace that is meant to dwell in your hearts, here and hereafter. Be God's peace among all those you meet. Go forth in the power and courage of God's word. Listen for it, pronounce it, become it. Amen, alleluia, yes, let it be. Thank you so much, Sister Helen. There will be a reception for students, guests, faculty, and staff on the esplanade of the Levy Center. The dis diploma distribution will also take place there, and everyone is invited. Will our guests please remain standing at their places until those on the stage and the graduates have uh, recessed, and then please follow the procession to the reception. The commencement exercises of Georgetown University School of Nursing and Health Studies are now officially closed. <laughs> 